Hello friends, I am Muhammad Afifuddin. In this video, we are going to learn the basic introduction of foundations and then we will see the types of footings. So first of all, we know that every building consists of two basic components that is substructure and superstructure. And what is substructure and superstructure? The superstructure is that part of building or it is a part of a structure which is above the ground level and it is used to serve the purpose of its intended use. Okay. Similarly, the substructure is the part of that building or it is the part of the structure which is basically below the ground level and it is used to transmit the upcoming load of the superstructure to the subsoil. Okay, so our foundation will lies under substructure and therefore a foundation is the part of the structure which is in direct contact with the ground to which the loads are transmitted. So what are the different types of foundations? The first one is isolated footing, number two combined footing, then strap footing, continuous footing, rough foundation, pile foundation and well foundation. So this is the classification of footing. Now first one we will see the isolated footing. The footing which are provided under single columns are called as isolated footing. That means the isolated footings are provided under each column and these are usually square, rectangular and rarely circular in plan. Okay and even for the column of circular, hexagonal or octagonal or any other shape, it is preferable to provide rectangular or square foundation. Okay. And isolated footing are ideally provided when the loads are small and the soil is not very poor. That means the soil bearing capacity is sufficient. Okay. And under the isolated footing, there are again two types that is uniform thickness footing or tapered thickness footing. Okay. So here in this diagram you can see that the each under the each column the footing is provided and this is we are called as isolated footing. Then our second type is combined footing. Combined footing supposed two or more column loads. Okay. And the combined footing becomes necessary under what conditions? The first condition is when the isolated footings are overlapped. Okay. When we are providing the isolated footing and their footing is overlap to each other then in that case we can provide the combined footing and the second circumstances is when the exterior column is close to the property line with the result of symmetrical isolated footing cannot be provided then in that case we will going to provide combined footing in this diagram in this figure you can see that the two columns are very near to each other or very close to each other and their footing may overlap to each other then in that case we have provide to provide the combined footing okay then our next type is strap footing a strap footing or it is also called as cantilever footing and it is the one of the types of combined footing okay and it consists of an isolated footing of two columns connected by a beam which is called as strap beam and the strap beam does not remain in the contact with the soil and thus it is not used to transfer any load of the superstructure to the soil. Okay. And these are better suited when one of the column is on the property line. Here in this picture you can see that the one column is near to the property line and therefore we are going to provide a beam here. Okay. And this beam is we are going to call as strap and this beam is not in direct contact with the soil here so therefore it is not used to transfer any upcoming load to the directly to the soil okay and this type of footing is called as strap footing then our next type is raft foundation or we can call it as mat foundation okay and it is used when the soil is having very low bearing capacity and the column loads are very heavy then the required footing area becomes very large and uneconomical and in that case we are going to provide 
the raft foundation or mat foundation which is consisting of solid reinforced concrete slab covering the entire area beneath the structures and it also supports all the columns provided here in this picture you can see that the slab reinforced slab is provided over the entire area okay and this all the area or this all the rcc slab we are going to use as a rough foundation then our next type is pile foundation it is one of the type of a deep foundation okay pile foundations are used when the loads are very heavy and soil has very poor bearing capacity in this case we will going to use the pile foundation okay and it is the type of deep foundation in which the loads are taken to the lower level by means of vertical member here you can see that a vertical pile is inserted in the ground up to the strong soil or the soil having the good bearing capacity and up to that we have to provide a pile here so this was the introduction to the various types of footings thank you